Now let's go through our low side windings. And here we have to a little, be a little more specific. And we have different ways of writing, uh, indicating our low side ratings. Remember now that hyphen that we had before, that denoted a separate winding. Now, I'm going to take the most common to start with. The most common to start with, if I would draw that out, it would look like this. I would have hyphen denoting separate winding. Then I would have 120 slant 240. Or I would have hyphen 240 slant 480. Now, written in this way, I can know, I will know, the design of that transformer for the low side. Now, when it's written like this, that means that that transformer is capable of connecting for either the lower value or both, depending on whether I series or parallel the internal connections. Now, now some are going to have external connections. I'll get into the four bushing in just a little bit. <clears throat> if I had a transformer that was rated under 167 kVA, I'm going to write that, under 167 kVA, that transformer then on the low side would have three bushings. It would have internal connections. And it would have the possibility of being either series or parallel connected. Now, the internal connections on the transformers under 167 kVA now are going to be identified, those internal connections are going to be identified by A, C, B, and D. Now, normally when it comes to you, it's going to be connected up series. In other words, A comes out, C and B and D come out like this. Now, if it's an additive transformer, remember your polarity of transformer. Now, if it's an additive transformer, that means this terminal is X1, this is X2, and this is X3. Now, if I was draw voltage vectors representing the voltage value, now let's say that I've got this one right here. Each one of those vectors would represent 120 volt. And you all remember that when we series connect vectors, we would go head to tail, and if each of those vectors represented 120 volts, then all the way across this thing, you see, I would have 240 volts. Now we get the same thing here. Now these tails are crossed over for convenience in paralleling, and I'll show you that in a little bit. If I series connect, then I'm going to go head to tail on this thing, you see, and I'm going to connect C and B to the center. So that I would get half that value, you see, I'd have 120 volt. The other half I'd have 120 volt. All the way across I would have 240 volt. In other words, we can graphically represent it such as we get here, such as we have here. Okay, now let's say that maybe out of this transformer instead of 240 volt I want 120 only. If I want 120 only and I have a voltage vector of 120 volt, you see, what I would do is draw that thing. Then I would put one vector right on top of the other. Tie the tail to the tail, the head to the head. The voltage value that I would get out of that thing then would be, would be 120 volt. Now, to connect this transformer up for 120 volt only, you have to make sure that you standardize and use only X2 and X1. If it was subtractive, my X1 would be over here, and my X2 would still be in the center. I would use these two. When we parallel in, see how the tails cross over for convenience. I want to run A and C over to X2, 
B and D over to X2, I'm going to only get 120 volt out of that particular transformer, you see, out of those two. And if you'll look on your name and data plate on that transformer, you'll see where it'll show you how to parallel that transformer. We, uh, there's a reason why we want to want to uh, parallel it in that fashion. And that's that if, if a transformer would be paralleled and you used anything other than X1 and X2, let's say you use X1 and X3, if you would take that transformer out of service and not restore it back to normal, in other words, normally they're going to come to you series connected, if you would not series connect that thing, then that you would find that if somebody stuck that in a residential service and you put 120 volt across a load that normally wants 240, then you're going to supply a low voltage to the service. And if they have motor load, whatever the case might be, you're going to burn up some appliances. So you want to make sure that when you use a three bushing transformer, that you use X2 and X1 when you want 120 volt out of that transformer only. Okay? Now, if we have a transformer that is rated anywhere from 167 through 500 kVA, then you're going to have, and of course the low side rating has to be 1 to 2, like either one of these, then you're going to have a 4 bushing transformer. And the way that'll look, it'll have spade lugs, NEMA hole spaced holes in the lugs, and it will look like this. It'll still have possibilities of being series or parallel connected. The only thing is that because of its high rating, because of the high current carrying capacity that it has to have, instead of having those small connections on the back side of those bushings, what you do is you make your connections on the outside. There's no internal connections to this thing. And of course you want to remember now, in review of your additive or subtractive, remember that transformers that are 200 kVA and down or 9,000 volts and down are going to be additive. In other words, both, both those ratings have to be under to be additive. Either one or the other above will make it subtractive, which means you'll reverse your terminals on this. In other words, the, the, the identification of your terminals are reversed. So if you have 200 kVA, now those aren't, you don't have to worry about them being inclusive because there isn't such a thing as a 200 kVA transformer or a 9,000 volt coil voltage. And here you're talking high side rating, by the way, high side coil rating. Okay, now the only transformer that could be additive would be 167, then it'd have to be under 9,000 volt, you see. Let's say I've got 167 kVA. That would mean this terminal would be X1. It's an additive transformer. Okay, that'd be X1. This would be X2. This terminal would be X3. And over here we have X4. In other words, one and two are on the same winding. In other words, let, let's, let's, say, let's say we have a 240, 480-volt transformer. We've got this one right here. <clears throat> if... Uh, that would mean that each of these windings would be rated at 240 volt. And if I want full value out of that transformer, that means I'm going to have to head to tail those. That would mean these two bushings would have to be connected together. Then I would come out like this. If I wanted to tap on the center of that thing, I would come out here like that as well. Now notice I didn't tie onto the center of that thing. It's, you're normally going to tie on to the bushing. You wouldn't uh, tie on to the center of it because you're going to have, have added lugs. These big spade lugs, uh, you see you can, you, you've got lugs that you can, you can tap right on there, you see, to, uh, to make all your connections from. 
uh, you wouldn't want to see a clamp around you use other connectors right in the center of this thing when you can use your lugs right here okay now in a situation like this where I'm series connected and I'm using X1 X2 and 3 together with X4 now let's say with this transformer that uh, let me get rid of this in here and let me change the rating on this tub let's let's go back up here and, and let's say that I'm using a 120 240 volt and that I want to I want to I want to get 120 volt only out of this particular transformer if each of those windings represents 120 volt then I want to parallel them I want to tie the tails together and the heads together and let's stick with the additive transformer again this will be four okay four okay now what I what I want to do now remember on the three bushing I had to use x1 and x2 but on this one what I want to do is use x1 and x4 so then that what I'll do is I'll tie the outside two together on both of them and come out and if I do that you see where I'm tying the heads together the tails together and that transformer would now only give me 120 volt and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll for terminals I'll use X1 and I'll use X4 and of course like I say we're we're gonna get only 120 volt out of that transformer okay now all of this is dealt with a rating on the low side of one to two and it's going to be either a three or a four bushing transformer okay now let's go to uh, another rating that you would find on the low side and with this one you'll see where we'll have say for example maybe we'll have 277 slant 480 why or 2400 slant uh, 4160Y or 7200 slant 12470Y okay now our hyphen this is a low side rating remember our uh, our hyphen is out front this is low side rating and in, and in some cases you see where these would be transformers that would be used possibly in a, in a substation and those the way you read this is that if I delta connect the high this side I would have 277 if I Y connect I would have 480 on this transformer if I delta connect I would have 2400 volt system if I Y connect I'd have a 4160 system down here if I delta connect 7200 volt if I Y connect I would have 12470 now the way this transformer would look on the low side is that I would have it would look like this I would have two bushings and depending on whether it's additive or subtractive I'm going to have x1 and x2 if it was subtractive I'd have x1 and x2 just two bushings of that and like I say the, these would more apt to be in a substation and that sort of thing okay now on this last one that I want to show you more typical on a dry type transformer but on this one I'll have my hyphen and then I'll go 240 120 and you'll see now the difference between this one and the other one I talked about it the other one where we had split center tap and so on we had uh, 120 240 this one has a center tap but it's not split and it's typical for a dry type transformer it would look like this and then I would have a center tap but it's not split I can't I can't parallel it for 120 only I'm going to always have either I'm going to always have 120 and 240 out of that transformer and of course the high side typical rating here might be 480 volt you see okay